Since the start of the pandemic, many have turned to house plants to boost their mood, but keeping them alive, well, that's another story. Gardening guru Danny Watson recently stopped by my house to break down the basics. Take a look. Danny, welcome back to my home. I love that today we're talking about indoor plants, and you have informed me that this is the hottest time of year for purchasing these plants. Why is that? So, Christine, this is actually house plant season. There's a whole season. Once everybody gets all their holidays packed away, the house looks kind of empty and bare. It does. So people go, you know, consumers start shopping for house plants, and the nurseries know about that. So they load up. Right now, you'll get some of the best selection you'll get all year. Well, this has been so beautiful just seeing this burst of greenery and color in the kitchen. Let's start off for those people who are beginners. Maybe they, of course, they want to incorporate some greens, but they don't know where. So where do we begin? All right. Well, I brought some varieties that I think is perfect for beginners. We're going to start out here with this variegated ivy, beautiful plant. Great for a bookshelf, you know, easy to, easy to grow, a little bit of water, a little bit of light, and this plant will thrive for you. And then next in front down here on the end is the pothos. That's my favorite plant. I'm telling so you, pretty. if you can't grow that, we're going to have to do an <laughs> intervention. Oh, no. That plant that grows so well. It's a fantastic plant. Again, low light or bright light, it'll adjust wherever you put it. So super easy to grow. And then next is the snake plant. I love that because it gives you some interest, you know, instead of just cascading over, it gives that upright look. Again, easy to grow, very little water on that. Oh, Don't overwater. let him be on the drier side. And the same with this ZZ plant. This is a low light plant. The ZZ likes to be in a lower light area, not a lot of water. It comes in a green variety or this beautiful raven. I love it. And then also this upright begonia easy to grow and you'll get a little bit of blooms out of that later. Oh, fantastic. Now let's also talk about what's trending right now. What's hot? So large foliage, large leaves are still all the rage. Plants just like this fiddle leaf fig. And you know, we place this over here in your breakfast room. I love Near it. the window, it fills that void, it fills that corner, adds a splash of green. And you know, being right by that window is perfect because it likes a lot of light. It One does. One secret about that, once you find that happy spot, don't move it. What, wait, why? Well, it does not like change. It, once it gets settled in, it's <laughs> like some either. of us, right? Yeah, exactly. Once it gets settled in, it, it'll start dropping leaves if you shift it around. Leave it in that happy place. So good. And then let's look in your kitchen here. Okay. So we added, this is an indoor caladium. It's also called an angel uh, wing. And I love oh, it because it has all that white and it looks great against your kitchen there. And it, you have those great fluorescents which act as natural light, which is perfect for that plant. Oh, good. And then also Monastera. Christine, this is the hottest plant period right now. This plant, I can't keep on the shelves. It has beautiful Swiss cheese type leaves. Right. And it gets that definition as it gets larger. Now, it, it will get much larger, so where it's at right now would probably be not the perfect place in the long term, but it's a low light plant. So in the kitchen where you have not many windows, it's perfect. It'll oh, do great. Just like this. Super easy. Excellent. And then lastly is the bird of paradise. And we place this over here in your back family room near the window. Again, it's easy to grow. Keep it near a window. And I would say why it about once a week and it gives you those great big leaves. I love it. Once a week. And, and you've talked about something that perhaps some other people have out there. And that's the challenge of not having a lot of natural light. So the fact that you've given me some options that don't really need it, that's fantastic. All right, Danny, now we're going to talk about combinations because these are all individuals, but I love when you get me a pot to get my hands dirty with. So we're going to work on actually creating almost like a centerpiece or, or a container garden here for you for indoors. I love I love reaching for the angel plants, and I'll tell you why. Angel plants are small little foliage plants to choose from. I say this is like when you go in a bakery, this is like the chocolate chip cookies. Oh. People just can't resist them because there's so many varieties, and I love mixing up the colors. So what we're going to do, we're going to take this bird of paradise, we're going to place it in this white container, and I chose the white container because I think it allows the color oh. and all these other varieties Look to really that. pop. So we're okay. going to set this as our centerpiece, Got it. and then we're going to add a little bit of soil here. Let's put those Rex begonias, which is what you're planting there. Kind of right here. Yep, right in the perfect? middle. Kind of lean him a little bit forward. Now, how big will this get? Will we have to so, worry about replanting in a different pot? All of these smaller ones will, will stay really low. Okay. Now, the bird's going to continue to go up. Got it. But these but will these. stay low. And that's what I love about Ooh. these angel plants. They, they're they perfect for filling in. Let's add one more of those ferns right in between the it. two. So this is um, a maiden hair fern, and I love that it's, the texture is what we're going for, by the yes. way. So you get color, you get texture that plays off of this bird of paradise, and once this you're one? finished, yep, one more here in the back. Got it. It will look great oh anywhere gosh, in your house. Danny. Yes. Oh, 
I just love it. And I love the pop of color as it mm -hmm. drapes over. You just see that bouncing off the white, beautiful. Any other advice for how to keep them alive? So fertilizing, and I brought two examples today. You can choose whatever you want, but water soluble, remember, works immediately. I like to use water soluble, any type of fertilizer you mix with water. Right. I do it about once, twice a month, that's it. But remember, it's kind of here today, gone tomorrow, so you have to keep using it. If you're a person that's on the go, you don't have time, then yes. maybe you'll choose a granulated. It's gonna be like little BBs almost. Right. And whenever you mix that in the soil, soil and water that, each time that you water, it breaks down a little bit more. So this takes a little longer to start out to work. This works quicker, but it really is how the time that you have. Exactly. I think I'm more of a bees, the, the granules. Yes. Okay. All right, Danny, thank you so, so much. We need a little color and life into our homes and you have shown us just how to do it. We appreciate it. Thank you, Christine. All right, guys, do me a favor. Head to our Web Extra on our Facebook page because we continue the conversation about all things pots from plastic to clay. He shared some great tips for all of you plant parents out there. We had so much fun. The good news is Ebony is a little worried about me, producer Ebony, but as of, yesterday, as of this morning, they're all still alive. Yay.